Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Will Pierce, and this is my third mission trip. I can look back at my first one and remember how um, just how nervous I was to to end up going on it. And you know, when people would ask me, "Are you going on a mission trip?" I you know, I couldn't really give them an answer. I was I was nervous because I I didn't know what to expect. You know, it's 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 you know a long way away, and you know you're, you're sleeping somewhere you never slept before. You're you're you know, working on someone's house you never met before, and you know, it's just, it's a lot to, to take in, but, you know, after I went, I had no doubt in my mind that I would, you know, keep coming and keep coming, and so when people asked me again this year, it was, you know, there, there was no, there was no hesitation in my, in my answer, and um, so, you know, each, each year I've gone, it's just, it's, it's always been different, it's never, no two trip has ever been the same, and, um, that's, that's just, there's so many reasons for that, but I couldn't really put them into words until, you know, you, you go on them and then you, you see how, how different they actually are. And, um, you know, there's, well, I think a big part of that is the relationships that you build. You know, you get to meet new people and different people every year, um, and you get to see the same people you've met before, and that's just, that's really special. Um, you know, everybody down there at Rural Missions makes it, um, yeah, it's there. It, it's amazing what they all do to to make it happen and stuff. But so my first two years, um, I felt that my calling was more to to take in as much as I could, both on the job site and you know back at the church and stuff, and just just absorb as much information. Um, we meet in small groups every night, and it was my first year. It was hard for me to really kind of open up and and be who I was, but that changed really quickly. Um, and so I think that now that I'm more of a senior member of the group. It was, it was my calling to, you know, kind of take all that information that I've learned and, and turn it in and, and share it with the new members of the group. And so this week I, I tried to do that as best I could. We, on the second house we, we were working on this week, we ended up putting walls up on the inside. It was a newly framed addition and, um, uh, one day, you know, it was it was about time to clean up, and um, and uh, Chris came around and said, you know, finish what you're working on, start packing up, get ready to get ready to leave. And we had just we had just cut all the pieces for the wall, and you know, we were kind of behind that day, so well, we kind of wanted to get it up super quick. So we ended up putting up an entire wall with two doors in it in like 20 minutes or something. It was it was pretty intense how we were able to do that so fast. <laughs> Um, but you know, just working together and stuff, it was it was crazy how how fast you can do something that's not. I mean, it's not easy to do that. Um, and you know, we have to take lots of water breaks throughout the week because it's so hot down there. And you know, when we're when we're working so hard, you know, sometimes it's it's hard to stop what you're doing and go out and do that. And then once you're out there, you're like, all right, I want to go back inside. I want to get back to work and stuff. And so I'm usually one of the people who's you know, trying to get everybody back in the house as, as quickly as possible. And towards the end of the week, um, I was being dragged back in and th the people in my group were, were pulling me back in the house. And that was just, that was really special. Um, and that's, that's one of the things I think that our group has that no other group does. It's just that the universal want to be there from everybody, kids and adults. I mean, it's crazy. There was a, I had the, ex the opportunity to experience a, another youth group here recently that was that come up that had come up from a church down south and you know I had to I got to talk to their leaders and their their kids and stuff and they're just there was something missing I didn't really put that together until I got back down to South Carolina and I realized that it was that universal want to be there and so you know it's 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 something that makes this group special and that's why we keep on going back down there year after year thank you Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Madison Carter. This is my third mission trip. Um, the first time that I went on the missions trip, I was maybe 
seven or eight, um, and I came along with my parents who were in the kitchen. Um, and being there that first time, I think I really wanted to come back because being so young, I wasn't allowed on the work site yet, and I just saw how much fun everybody else had, all the older kids, like that's what I wanted to do. So that's why I came back um, and really just fell in love with it. So my first year was really great, came back for a second year. Um, the, my first year coming back as a member of the youth group, uh, one thing that really stood out to me was the music and what we do down there in terms of music and you you think about it and then what happens is you get down there and you realize that everybody in South Carolina really likes to sing and dance with everything that they do um, and just meeting all of those people that are like that it was it was great and it's really bi binding um, as a group so the year before that we had John Naus who played the guitar and I was really a little bit upset when I heard this year we didn't have a guitar going on the trip so um, I thought to myself that it would be kind of cool if I brought my ukulele um, which I I like to play and it's fun to sing along to it's easy and I I didn't end up bringing it um, and I was a little bit bummed because I wasn't sure I was on the fence about it uh, and so what ended up happening is I I asked one of the the older leaders that was coming down a second a couple days um, after we came down so I asked her I was like hey do you mind picking up my ukulele um, and it, it didn't it didn't work out so I was kind of okay I was like maybe it just won't work this year um, and actually what ended up happening is some of the older um, adult leaders that knew um, how much I'd been kind of looking forward to it they they were on a supply run for food and they were at Walmart and I guess it just kind of made sense and clicked and they actually bought um, this ukulele and they brought it to us so I'm gonna share that <laughs> so for those of you that can't tell um, this is a cars themed ukulele <laughs> It, it has Lightning McQueen on it. Um, and they came up to me. Um, they were hiding it behind their back, came up to me at one of our meal times. Um, and they said, hey, like, we have a surprise for you. I knew you were sad, so we got you this. <laughs> and I, in that moment, was, it was so, I was so thankful for all of those people who just, they saw how much that, that meant to me, the music part, and really feeling a part of the South Carolina traditions. And it was, it was really amazing, so thank you, Miss Updike. I really appreciate it. Um, and it, it really went to show me how sometimes things work out in ways that you don't always expect them to. Um, and it, it really, it brought us together, I think. So at, in the evening, we would have small groups. Um, and after small group, we would have a slideshow. The slideshow would consist of pictures from the day of what we did on our, on our, um, in our groups. So the small groups we had at night were the groups we were working with during the day. And so during the day, we would be doing different projects. So it was great for us to get to see what everybody else was doing. Um, and then after that, we would, we would just hang out and sing songs and it was, it's really, it brings you together as a group. It's, it's funny to think of, if you see our youth group, there's a lot of high school boys who you wouldn't really think that they're gonna get up and sing and dance, but they were some of the first ones up there, I promise you. <laughs> um, and it was, it's really special, it's, it's binding. Um, another, another example of the beautiful uh, song and dance that we experience when we're down there is the seafood jamboree so we go every year um, it's to rural missions which is the the people that really um, give us the the assignments for where we're going to be doing our work um, and every year we're singing and dancing down there sometimes it's a little slow but people are always getting up and always ready to sing and dance and they're inviting us into something that they always do it's their tradition and they bring us into it and it's 
it's amazing. Um, another example would be uh, Miss Mungin. So Miss Mungin is the lady whose house we worked on um, my first year, the previous year. That year we gutted the house completely and started fixing a little bit. So when we left that house, there were no walls, no ceilings. We took everything off the off of the um, roof, all the shingles, and started repairing. So all the interior walls were stripped of everything, basically. So this year, we actually had a chance to go back and see the work that all of the other teams that have been there since we had been there last year. Um, and we got to actually finish and complete her house. And it was, it was so fulfilling. We, we um, prayed with her multiple times. And one of the amazing things about this woman, Miss Munjin, is she'll start, your, she'll start the prayer and she just, she starts it with a song. And so that's her way of praying is, is actually singing. So it starts slow and quiet and then everybody joins in and it gets louder and louder and it's beautiful. And I, I really, I loved that part of the trip. Um, so that's one thing that I would say was really special to me. There's so many different aspects of the strip, but the music was really unifying and um, I am really appreciative of all of these people that are, they know what you need and they're the, always there to help you. And also very appreciative of all the support from everybody in the congregation with your prayers and thank you. So this was my first time on the mission trip, and um, Father Ben thought it would be nice if I gave the adult perspective of what happens down there every week or every year. So a year ago at this time, I was sitting out in the congregation with all of you, listening to the newly returned mission crew talk about their time in South Carolina and how it had changed them. I remember being blown away by how they connected to those they were helping and also their eloquence in describing the experience. I loved that St. James gave their youth this opportunity and thought how lucky the kids were to have this experience at such a young age. A year later, with becoming more involved in the high school youth group, one of my priorities, I knew that I wanted to start that involvement off on the mission trip and have that shared experience with them. If you'd asked me before I left what I expected, I would have talked a lot about the impact of helping others who have so much less. I would have been partially right. I was, of course, affected by seeing the needs of those we were helping. But I lived in DC for years, where I taught the kids that no one else wanted to teach. What I saw in South Carolina was heartbreaking, but not new to me. What blew me away, again, was watching these children, your children, although really they are all our children this week. I was in no way prepared for my week in Hollywood, South Carolina, where I saw 25 children working eight hours a day in 95 degree weather not grudgingly or half-heartedly, but wholeheartedly and with laughter. Where I saw these same kids come back from the work site exhausted and hungry and tackle their daily chores without complaint. Where our tunnel snakes, Hall, Brady, Alex, and Justin spent an entire day crawling underneath a house to put in fiberglass insulation where when we had to put the kids in the house on Friday because we kept hearing thunder in the distance, the framing crew kept right on going, determined to complete their job, while Julia spent her time staring longingly out the window at the adults who were working on her 
deck. Where on Wednesday, at the Seafood Jamboree, Max was the first to answer Linda's call for dancers with the rest of our boys close behind him. And we all learned how to clap together. Where our juniors and seniors not only worked at full speed, but also helped to teach the sophomores and freshmen new skills. Their leadership was great to see. Romans 8.37 was the guiding verse for our week. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. Which Father Ben tied to the Lord's prayer and its call to do God's will to create heaven on earth. In small group on Friday, I told my crew that I wished they could have stepped outside of their work world for just a minute this week to see what I did. 25 kids who were not only being changed by their experience, but who were changing others' lives, bringing them a piece of heaven through their actions every day at the site and off of it, including Maddie on her ukulele and Alex's hustle dance tutorial. As a mom, I often think about the impact the world will have on my children after they leave home. This week, for the first time, I saw instead how these children, your children, our children, will impact it. I have more confidence than at any time in the recent past that our future is sure to be a good one. I've seen all of these children use a hammer and can assure you that no matter what shape the world we leave them is in, they can fix it. I'd like to end with a suggestion. If you have never been on the mission trip, please consider going. Selflessly, you will be helping to bring comfort and joy to those in desperate need of both. Selfishly, you will leave amazed by the children we are preparing to send out into the world and with a renewed sense of optimism about our future. I promise you will come back a different and better person than you left. If you can't make it on mission, please consider supporting it financially to ensure that it keeps going far into the future. Our children are incredible, and we should be generous in sharing them with others. Before we continue, I just want to say one uh, additional thing. Uh, it takes a tremendous amount of logistics to, to go down there, and um, the adults, uh, I echo exactly what, what Laura said about each one of these uh, uh, youth and, and, and the amount of pride that they bring to the congregation, uh, but I also want to acknowledge the adults that gave up a week of, uh, uh, of their lives. Uh, some took vacation time. Uh, some began the process well before we got on the bus, uh, preparing our meals and then planning out uh, what we would have to eat. Uh, and we ate lavishly all week, uh, uh, filling our medical kits, uh, planning the work that would be done, filling the U-Haul, uh, figuring out where we were going to shower and sleep and making arrangements, uh, filing all the paperwork, uh, fundraising. Uh, it took a tremendous amount of energy. Uh, it does every year. Uh, and it's not just the time that we're down there, but uh, uh, our adults uh, deserve a round of applause as well as our youth. So uh, for all, uh, Let's uh, give a round of applause. And if you play your cards right, you just might hear a little bit of that ukulele before the service is done. So, uh, 